Nestled between the Danube River and the Alps, Franz von Stuck was born in the Bavarian village of Tettenweiss. With his dark, suave Italian looks, the young Franzl had an idyllic childhood. Father earned his livelihood as a miller and mother was supportive, particularly of her child's fondness for drawing. She enrolled her son at the Kunstgewerbeschule at nearby Munich when Franzl was 15 years of age. Three years later, Franz matriculated to the city's Academy of Fine Arts. Franz later wrote that he was forced to provide himself a living while still maintaining his studies. At the age of 17, when I finally had to fend for myself, I tried to earn money in a variety of ways. I drew cartoons for obscure, humorous magazines, designed pewter beer mugs, painted plates, and so on. The work was in the contemporary style of neo-Renaissance, which was the nationally declared style of Germany. Between 1882 and 1884, several of Franz's drawings were published in Allegory and Emblem. This book of emblematic designs provided craftsmen of varying disciplines with a wealth of models which they could copy freely. Unlike other artists displayed, Franz stretched the style from merely historicism. His illustrations excelled in dramatizing perspective while using an easy and natural line. Franz's work won him the cover art of the book. Franz hardly bothered to attend the academy and regarded himself as self-taught at this point. By way of pastel and colored chalk, Franz began expanding his work from black and white illustrations. Then, proudly presenting at the Munich Annual Exhibition, Franz displayed The Guardian of Paradise. Crowds gathered before it, discussions broke out, and high above all the heads the guardian of paradise gazed into the distance, his muscular bare arms holding a sword that descended glowing with flames. The painting won the 26-year-old artist both a gold medal and a large sum of money. It did not belong to the traditional current of historical painting, nor to the popular genre depicting peasants called Lederhosen painting. It was not naturalism or impressionism. Franz was closer to those painters of the soul and the mind, the pre-Raphaelites or French symbolism. The explosions of paint behind the fiery sword are a reference to the sensory splendor of paradise. The transparency of the guardian's garment and the radiant halo around his head have the same unreal nature. The figure may appear to have been painted realistically from the model, but in fact he has been transformed into the ideal of an androgynous youth. The embodiment of an angel raised above mankind. Biographer Franz Hermann Meisner described the combination of the technique and style. Everything about it astonishes one. The superb painting technique, borrowed so brilliantly from Paris, with its dissolution of light, the play of light on the surface, and the translucent body. The conquest of the contour through masterfully concealed drawing, a feeling for style that recalls the elegance of Burne Jones. Publicists and later biographers were keen to present Guardian of Paradise to the public as Franz's very first oil painting in order to play up its genius. However, my first oil painting, as the artist himself states, was Wild Chase dated at the same time as Guardian of Paradise, around 1889. Apocalyptic wild horses, pale ghostly figures, and the central figure of the hunter with his formidable spear and threatening hound is superbly balanced by a carefully constructed composition. The dynamic movement is increased by the perspective of extreme foreshortening. Also to that same year is credited the painting Innocentia. Her gaze so clear and straight, seeing so far, 
a world entire in that so limpid gaze. There, love and pain lie resting in a dream. This poem excerpt by Suck's friend and biographer, Julius Beerbaum, tributes the painting. The image is derived from the Christian iconography of the Immaculate Conception of the Virgin Mary and the white lily in her hand as a sign of purity. The subject here, however, is neither chaste nor pure, but a young girl in her teens who is becoming aware of her sexuality. The dark brown, alluring eyes, the red lips, and the breast just visible under the sheer blouse suggest the imminent end to her virginity. Here the symbol of puberty is presented. Innocence will soon turn into lewdness. The pastel drawing Amour belongs to the early period of Franz's career. At this time, I slowly began to work up to painting by making pastels. Franz repeatedly used a combination of figures and heraldic arms in his illustrations, but whereas the cupids on the page are mischievous boys, Franz gives the youth in this work a monumental character. Just like the goddess Venus, the angel rises from the sea and proudly displays his emblem. On a half gold, half brown crest, we see a heart pierced by an arrow and encircled by a serpent biting its tail. The reptile symbolizes eternal love, but not without another association, temptation. The snake and the fall from paradise, the precursor to carnality. The subject of cupids were a source of inspiration throughout the artist's career. Other works were finished in Franz's breakthrough year of 1889. Drunken Centaur, and wine. Fighting fawns depict two fawns enjoying their sport of butting heads while on a wall and in the shadow countless forest creatures watch. This is the first appearance in Franz's paintings of these fawns, the link between man and goat, the symbol of amorousness. The influence was from the Swiss artist Arnold Buckland, who often depicted these mythical creatures and soon became a popular subject for several artists at the turn of the century in Munich. Finally, and most fittingly, for an impressive show from a freshman painter, homage to painting. The design contains antique elements such as the eagle throne and the Greek face with laurel tree but these details are secondary to the flat composition recalling ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs. The homage to painting was a poster designed for the Munich Art Exhibition of 1889. A year after the successful debut, Franz exhibited his Lucifer, the counterpart to the Guardian of Paradise. Lucifer, the fallen angel who embodies hatred, glares at the viewer with green, vengeful eyes. The phosphorus blue rays of light on the left are a reference to the spark of hope of life that still glimmers in this otherwise shadowy helm. King Ferdinand of Bulgaria was so impressed by this work that he bought it for his palace in 1891, and he once told Stuck that some of his courtiers hastily crossed themselves when walking past him. Lucifer is portrayed as the gnawing feeling of guilt not as a traditional ecclesiastical devil with horns. The ashamed, huddled Lucifer may symbolize precisely the opposite to the powerful guardian of paradise with his proud pose. Around 1890, Franz was regularly to be found in the picturesque artist colony of Osternberg. The motif of still water and reflections on its surface is associated with a positive narcissism. Just like Narcissus, who bends over the water to be united with his reflection and ignores the outside world in order to withdraw into himself, the artist is a lonely figure who is wrapped up in his own created world. When Franz was asked whether he painted his new subject of landscapes directly from nature, he replied, I first have to learn it by heart, then I can paint it. Evening landscape evokes a somber mood. The dark tone of the forest creates a silhouette-like form and the reflections in the lake betray a highly personal interpretation of the landscape. 
In 1891, Franz painted his first version of the despair and remorse which pursue a criminal after his deed. The ancient furies, the goddesses of vengeance, hide behind a rock as they lie in wait. The sight of these creatures with their repulsive, half-naked bodies and slimy snakes for hair is a foretaste of the torments awaiting the murderer. Also in 1891, Franz painted Pieta. Stripped to simplicity and stillness, the work captures the sorrow of Mary without her face being visible. The expression of emotion can be seen in Christ's tightly clenched hand on the marble sarcophagus. The discrepancy between the vertically and horizontally arranged figures in the Pieta was designed to create an impression of great pain. Some understanding viewers were able to grasp this, said Franz in an interview. In 1893, autumn evening was produced. A lone horseman roams a vast landscape. Above his head, birds circle in the sky hung with heavy clouds, adding tension to the twilight. The writer can represent man in general, who in the course of life gives up chasing in order to return to a true spiritual love. Franz paints a low horizon, expressing the immensity of the heavens, contrasting the insignificance of man. As the writer Thomas Mann describes the scene, art blossoms, art reigns, art extends its rose-covered scepter over the city and smiles. Munich grew into the art center of Germany. The Bavarian government supported the local exhibitions, but in 1892, an avant-garde of about 100 dissidents, including Franz, coalesced into a new society. Called the Munich Succession, they oppose provincialism and works designed to please the masses. It aimed to put on smaller exhibitions of higher quality. With the sponsorship of Prince Regent Leopold of Bavaria, in 1893 the group exhibited with a resounding success. Franz believed it was only now that he received true recognition. Franz's sin brought crowds flocking to the Neue Pinokothek. The doctor and poet Hans Carasso described the deep impression that this work made on the viewer. The fame of the painting drove us through the galleries. We stopped nowhere and opened our eyes for the first time when we were finally standing opposite it. It was displayed on a special easel in its broad, monumental gold frame. And now all three of us stared at the night of hair and snake, which did not allow too much of the pale female body to be seen. The shadowed face with the bluish white of the dark eyes was less important to me at first than the iron sheen of the nestling snake, its evil, beautifully designed head and the dull checkered pattern on its back, over which a delicate blue line ran like a seam. There are works of art that strengthen our sense of community, and there are others that seduce us into isolation. Stuck's painting belonged to the latter group. There are several versions of sin, Franz is best known being the earliest. Sensuality is an initial treatment of the theme in which Eve, the snake between her legs, lies in wait for her male prey. In sin, the composition of sensuality is reduced to Eve's upper body, with the dangerous python wrapped around her neck like a boa. With Stuck, there is no hesitation between good and evil. Eve has chosen evil and has become one with the snake. The seductive and voluptuous snake becomes the symbol of woman, attractive and depraved, yearning for sensuality. In addition to the fall of man, another of Franz's obsessions was the sphinx, the man-devouring creature that is the embodiment of the femme fatale. Painted in blazing red, the kiss of the Sphinx shows a passionate embrace. With her lion's claws, the Sphinx clasps the body of the unfortunate man who has sunk to his knees while her lips press against his, like a vampire sucking the life out of him. The moment of greatest pleasure, also the moment of death, writhing in the claws of the Sphinx unresisting, surrendering sensually to his fate. 
As Sinn had done, the painting caused a sensation in Munich. Reproductions of it were removed from windows of galleries by order of the police. Another contemporary view of the topic was painted by Franz at the turn of the century. Here the Sphinx is not the customary half-cat and half-woman, but a cool modern woman. The critic Fritz von Ostini writes of the painting, in which the fabled creature appears simply as a naked woman lying, watching on her stomach, supported by her elbows. The cat's body is not there at all, and still the creature is completely a cat. An expression and attitude. False and beautiful, flattering and dangerous. Returning to the Fighting Fawns in 1894, this version of the bestial battle for a female was altered by Franz several times. Originally, the fighting centaurs were placed against a light, snow-white background, and the anxiously watching female centaur was missing. In such works, Franz reflects the theory that the female mate, together with the struggle for survival, as one of the most important aspects of the development of all living creatures. Through this competition, man can raise himself to a higher spiritual level. Woman who is here left in the background was given the role in a later version of the originator of the battle who brings out the worst in man's nature. Around 1897, the theme of the Amazon appeared in Franz's work. The painting Fighting Amazon is the first known version. The Amazon with her long dark locks and feathered helmet ready to hurl her deadly spear joins the ranks of such man-killing women as Salome and Judith. This makes the figure of the militant Athena a symbol of the desire for freedom. From the same year of fighting Amazon, the female warrior is shown frontally with a lance and a statue of Nike, the goddess of victory. The frontality creates a bold composition. Along with the gold background, Franz returns to the hieroglyph motif. Despite the stylization Franz gave Athena a human quality, he was using his wife he married the same year, the American Mary Lynn Pantner, as his model. With a barely disguised eroticism, two wood nymphs seesaw on a tree trunk in the work The Seesaw. Sitting like witches on a broomstick, witch scenes or witches' Sabbath were hugely popular around 1900. The fact that the broomstick, in this case the tree trunk, is a phallic symbol is clear from the pleasure of the two nymphs. In contrast with the dark background, the figure of a naked blonde girl on the right squatting on her haunches has a flushed face. On the left we see the girl leaning back in a bright red dress, her long hair standing out against the light sky. Apart from the symmetrically and balanced composition, this work is a decorative splendor of color. In 1898, the successful Franz was able to realize his ideal of creating his own universe, a neoclassical villa on a prominent site not far from the river Isar. The caller who would ring the bell beside the heavy bronze door found himself being stared at by a head of Medusa that functioned as a letterbox. Insular and introverted like the castle of refugees of King Ludwig II, Franz's villa also looks placeless like a structured desire for another world. A retouched photograph of the villa reveals that Franz wanted to stress this placelessness even more, for he superimposed giant poplars on either side of the classical villa. Franz's impressive temple of beauty was a result of his artistic ideal. Just as Franz placed his paintings in frames which he designed himself to harmonize with their surroundings, so he integrated works of art interior decoration, and furniture. To keep up with his expenses, the newlywed Franz became a well-known portrait painter and soon he could barely keep up with the commissions. In his portraits, he was less concerned with conveying the character of the person than with elegant lines and decorative effects. The warm red against the white blue sky makes the Lady in Red of around 1900 a playful and refreshing contrast. Combining people with animals, or in this case with a mythical creature, Franz paints these three girls riding a centaur in 1903. With floral wreaths in their hair, the pale girl in the middle still looks rather frightened and has no knowledge of what awaits her. 
One critic writes about the ride, the flute, not only a musical instrument, but an erotic symbol, plainly shows what the good-humored centaur has in store for them. As a counterpart to the theme of the triumphant 1897 Amazon, in 1904 Franz painted the Wounded Amazon. Numerous studies and sketches show the very careful preparations. Small, rapidly done studies in pencil, a fluent sketch in oils, a detailed life study in chalk, and various photographs. In these photographs, the model Frau Fies kneels on the ground holding her wounded breast with her right hand. The enlarged photograph was probably transferred directly to the canvas because under the paint layer, the pencil lines marking the light and shadow areas are visible, particularly on the body. Franz limited the colors to his favorite combination of light, dark, and red. Because of the photographic studies, Franz was able to concentrate completely on toning the nude body and on framing the image, the latter especially considered. The prominent round shape of the shield dominates the composition, but the hat shading for both the shield and body blend in rhythm. The Amazon motif provided Franz an excuse for painting a modern, sensual nude. The helmet and footwear, including the high greaves, intensifies the eroticism. The high drama and provocative pose illustrate the base formula, love and suffering. Symbolic of debauchery, joy of life, and liberation is the 1906 painting Salome. The erotic dance is linked to an irrepressible sensuality with the head of John the Baptist as the object of the woman's lust. The dancing Salome flaunts her bare white torso adorned with sparkling jewels. On the right, a dark-skinned serving woman brings in the Baptist's head on a dish. There is a visual contrast between Salome's seductive body set against the head of John the Baptist surrounded by a sky-blue halo. The backdrop is an infinite starry night. Ultimately, Salome has to pay the price for her perverse, provocative attitude. though the moral was irrelevant for after all love's secret is deeper than death around 1912 Franz painted several works on the theme of spring associated with burgeoning young life Franz personified the season with a young girl portrayed in profile she wears a floral wreath in her wild unkempt hair and holds a bunch of the same flowers at her breast on Franz's 50th birthday on 23rd of February, 1913, he was made an honorary citizen of the University of Munich. Formerly, he was a professor there. The special birthday was celebrated in theatrical style. In the evening, a dinner was held in the studio in his villa, which was attended by members of Munich's high society, ranging from artists to ministers. That same evening, Franz's students from the academy paraded past carrying torches. The torchlight procession depicts the students assembling in front of the villa in the dark winter evening. The silhouette of Franz appears on the balcony, standing out against the bright light from his studio. Franz's only daughter Mary, born in 1896, was his favorite model and highly photogenic. She was painted numerous times and in various roles. In this 1916 composition, with exception to the flesh color, the thin paint is applied with broad brush strokes. The combination of the red chair mixed with a green and brown background gives the work a warm aura. An intensity is added with Mary's pink and purple dress. She lightly holds a long necklace chain with the jewel carefully atop a red, green, and gold pillow. A 
According to Greek mythology, the once king Sisyphus is doomed to push a huge stone up a hill in the underworld. It then rolls back down and he has to start all over again for eternity. Franz makes the forms abstract and lets the figure merge with the background. As in Wounded Amazon, he opts for three basic colors, with the red glow in the background signifying hell. The French critic André Germain wrote of the painting, what tragic energy of revolt we see in this intense effort that makes the whole body palpitate. In creating such giants, Stuck has, so to speak, imitated the philosopher Nietzsche. He has raised up a whole race of supermen. The biblical heroine Judith, who seduced the enemy general Holofernes and then killed him, symbolizes the dominance of woman over man. After the man has satisfied his sexual urges, he must pay with his death. This painting depicts the scene where the roles are reversed. Now the man is the woman's object. Unlike Salome, there are no decorative elements nor facial expressions. The theme is reduced to abstract areas of color and accentuated contours. The white skin of the kneeling Judith set against the dark figure of Holofernes. composition of wind and waves is translated into two of the elements of the cosmos, air and water. The work reveals Franz's theory of color as he expounded it to his students at the academy. Cold and warm colors have different spatial effects, depending on the surface and the surroundings they either approach or withdraw. Their internal properties make them advance or retreat on the surface. Light colors are cold and seem to recede. Shadow colors are warm and push forward. The painting was still incomplete on his easel when on the 30th of August, 1928, at the age of 65, Franz died in his villa. <laughs>